All right, so let's get into it. Part two. Like I said yesterday, I will attempt to cover this whole segment in defense of Calvinism. And for this clip, the actual excerpt that I'll be using today, they actually make a good point. I mean, even a broken clock is right at least once a day, right? So anti-Calvinists are not wrong about everything, just the things that matter, and that's the problem. Yes, I've thought that in listening to your testimony, I've thought, yep, yep, that's how I felt. That's what I saw. I have definitely related to yours as well in those ways. Um, it always, and the quoting John three sixteen, yes, when they would just say, whosoever, louder and louder. It's like, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I'm not listening. Whosoever, yeah. whosoever, no, no, no. Right, yeah. and I would yeah, scoff. Like. In my spirit, in my heart, I was scoffing. I'm like, oh, please, you know, which is so sad, but that is genuinely how I viewed it. I viewed it as less than and, and just like not, you just don't quite grasp the, the profoundness of what I've been able to grasp, you know? And I didn't like go around thinking that way every day, but that kind of heart does affect you. Even if you don't realize it on the day to day, it, it sinks deep into your heart and it does affect you in a, in yeah. I think a proud and sinful way. Um, yeah. And you don't realize, you don't even realize it's happening. It, mm -hmm. it really does be kind of a, a spiritual superiority complex. And because yes. you feel like you've come to understand and know something that these poor, you know, Armenians, and that's, you know, everybody <laughs> wasn't a Calvinist back in that day. That, they, they were Armenians. Mm -hmm. And they mean well, you know, they, they do a lot of good things, but they're just not theological. They're just not very exegetical they, they they're surface level christians they're not deep christians like me and john macarthur you know and all my my peeps and so that that kind of feeling whether you recognize it's happening or not and i've heard actually calvinist you know i've heard uh, trevin wax on a, a kind of a talk back he was talking about this of how calvinism can develop this kind of uh, superiority complex where you kind of feel like you've just got some kind of an understanding and better knowledge of things than everyone around you because the truth is you kind of do. You mm -hmm. have studied some things and you know some things about sociology that they're just not aware of and a lot of them aren't even interested in. And that creates this feeling of, well, I'm more studied and I've, I'm more educated than you are on these doctrines. And that, that leads to, even if unintentionally, to, to a little bit of a maybe spiritual pride and kind of ego with regard to these things. And it sounds like you kind of experience the same thing. I have, and I think it's important, like if there's any Calvinists listening right now, I wonder how I would have responded hearing a conversation like this when I was to sold out Calvinist. Would I have examined my heart at that moment? Would I have said, man, do I do that? Do I deep down think, yeah, we know more, we're, we're superior? Um, I, I hope so. You know, I don't know how I would have responded, but I would hope that Calvinists now would check their hearts. Like, do you think, you know, that you know something they don't know, you got something they don't have. And if so, like that is a deep heart issue that I think we should pay attention to. So first off, the first thing we need to understand is that Calvinism is not the gospel. Calvinism is the doctrine that helps and assists biblical Christians in rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what it is. Much like the algebra equation that assists the math teacher in helping to break down the algebra curriculum. That's all it is. Now here's the question. Is the algebra teacher arrogant or cocky when he stands before the class in full confidence of what he teaches, by which is true? No, he's not. Okay. Now, what is faith? Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the confidence of that which hoped for. And granted, this is the only time that I'll ever use the NIV's version of a verse, simply because I believe the word confidence has a much better, much better meaning than the word substance in regards to faith. But that's just my opinion. Now, the one thing I do agree with them in regards to the arrogant and boastful Calvinists uh, that's full of lofty pride is that that is wrong. I do agree there that that is wrong. And if you've been subscribed to my channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard that my testimony of how Tim Conway harshly rebuked me for being a young, uninformed Calvinist. And even though I was wrong in how I used the doctrine of Calvinism, it means that I was wrong, not Calvinism. And I had to repent of that, which I did. But at the heart of this issue, this isn't about arrogance. It's about confidence. It's about the confidence in what is true. I, as a Calvinist, can be bold as a lion when I declare truth, and then breaking down that truth by points, using the five points. I have done nothing wrong by doing that. See, people like Elena don't like the confidence Calvinists have because they don't like Calvinism, and it puts a bad taste in their mouth. Now, just admit it, because that's true, and you know it's true, and then repent of it, because the truth is you do not worship the God of the Bible, and that's the problem.